Hello everyone. In this very short video, I'm just going to be talking about how to distill ethanol. Now, ethanol can be made from glucose solution in a process called fermentation. And you also produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct. So what we actually have is glucose, if we think about a word equation, going to carbon dioxide and ethanol. Now, living organisms, namely yeast, provide enzymes needed to catalyse this reaction. And there are certain conditions that are needed for fermentation. A sort of moderate temperature between 25 and 50 degrees, water provided in the glucose solution, and an anaerobic condition. So conditions where there is a complete absence of oxygen. So air must be kept out. Now, fermentation is a slow process. And it stops actually when the ethanol concentration gets to about 15% or so. And in a process called fractional distillation, we can separate that ethanol out. Now, the process of distillation is commonly used commercially to increase that alcohol concentration. But it should be noted that premises to do that must have a license. So we're going to just talk through this picture that I have here and explain exactly what is going on, how we're going to distill our ethanol. So we have a Bunsen burner and here is our distilling flask with our sort of glucose solution ethanol mix if you like and when we heat the water and ethanol with that Bunsen burner what we see is that the ethanol is the first to evaporate. So you get vapours of pure ethanol. So these are vapours of pure ethanol. And these vapours rather start appearing at about 78 degrees C. So water starts to evaporate at 100. Ethanol will evaporate at 78. So instantly there we've just separated the ethanol out from our glucose water solution. Now, we only have then water left in the distilling flask by this point, at the point we've actually decided to carry out this distillation. We'd only have water left in this flask and pure ethanol vapours coming up this tube here and they pass down into what's known as the condenser or the Liebig condenser. It's the condenser but sometimes referred to as the Liebig condenser, named after the scientist that invented it. We have cool water coming in and cool water coming out. Now the reason why you have the water coming in and out is to make sure that the condenser has an outer layer that's so cold that this vapour will condense inside of it. So this water vapour, if you like, or the, these vapours condense inside the condenser, turn into liquid and will pass down the base of the condenser into this receiving flask and what you end up producing is called a distillate. So what we're able to do is get out of our water and ethanol solution our pure ethanol. And that is used commercially to increase its concentration in a process known as fractional distillation. So the whole purpose of this is to separate it from the reaction mixture. Now, just a few sort of points, especially for those that are studying um, distillation and brewing at a higher level. One of the things I want to just talk about quickly is temperature. And I said very specifically that the temperature for fermentation usually is around 25 to 50 degrees Celsius. That's because if the temperature is too low, the yeast actually becomes inactive. And if it's too high, then you denature the enzymes in the yeast and they'll stop working. Now, I do have a video about enzymes and denaturing, um, which explains what this actual word means. So it has to be kept between 25 and 50, which is within its sort of optimum or best range, if you like. 
And equally, I said in terms of the conditions, you must have an anaerobic environment, one where air is excluded from the container that you're carrying fermentation out in. If air happened to get into that container, then the ethanol would actually oxidise to something called ethanoic acid. And that is something that you wouldn't, that's a product, a byproduct that you would not want in this reaction. You actually find ethanol acid in vinegar. Now, you, you don't want that in this case. You want pure ethanol. So that's why it's important to keep anaerobic conditions. Okay, hope all of that helps.